Be inspired on Liberty Radio. A heart devoted to pleasing God. Lord, show me where I should go. I need your direction. There are many lessons to be learnt when we consider Abraham's story. An ordinary man who stood out in God's eyes for carrying within himself a permanent tribute that only a few truly offer to God. Honour Abraham honoured God for 100 years and God, to this day, honours Abraham. Anyone who is willing to follow the example of this man of faith and honour God in everything will also be honoured by him. June will be the month of honour to God. Learn more at the Cathedral of Miracles, 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4 3NX, or at any universal church near you. Good evening everyone, may God bless you and welcome to what will be a very special series of programs throughout this week. We are living the month of honour and throughout this week we will understand what it means to honour God in a practical sense. And you've probably understood by now what honour is, but how does that translate to our physical daily life? That's what we are going to be speaking about here every night. And actually, I have to tell you already right off the bat that these programs will be slightly different because we are going to be teaching based on the Word of God what that means. And today we will see the comparison of the Temple of Solomon that Solomon built, the original Temple of Solomon, with honoring God, how the two things are connected and what that has to do with today. So let's go and watch the testimony of Lena Paquette. If you were in the service yesterday, you watched this testimony. For those who weren't, you'll be able to see that she says the first contact she ever had with the first fruits, with the tithe, was when she stole the tithe from her mother who used to attend the church. That's the first time she came into contact with knowing about the tithe and her mother who attended the church in, with a lot of wisdom taught her that this is not right. But that's the first time she heard about it until she learned about honoring God. Let's watch Lena's testimony. Get yourself ready because from today we will learn to honor God in practice. My initial contact with the first fruits was my mum was attending the Universal Church. She'd been attending for about a year and I was addicted heavily at the time. I didn't attend the church and I wanted to feed my addiction. And as usual, I'd go into her bag, I'd steal her money and feed my addiction. But on this particular day, um, I found the envelope and it said, you know, first fruits and I looked at it. That day, taking the money was so much more difficult than any other day when I would go and take it somehow something connected about it. I took the money and I was able to, you know, buy my different drugs, marijuana, etc. Um, but that stayed with me. So obviously when my mum found out and she was trying to prepare her first fruits, she noticed that some of it wasn't there. Um, I was the only person in the home that would do something like that. My other sisters were not addicted. They were very obedient and good children. I was not. So she then came to speak to me and explain that it was something very important, very special, and that it's up to me, but she advises me to, you know, to make a prayer at the time and just ask God for forgiveness because it's something very serious. I remember kind of blurting something like, oh God, if you're there, blah, 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 you know, please forgive me. I didn't really mean it. And I left it. So before coming to the Universal Church, my life was really, really 
really difficult. We had health problems. I had a lot of bumps all over my skin. The doctors didn't know what it was. No, nothing could cure it. We had a lot of problems in the family. I could not get on with my mum at all. Not even for one day. We fought every single day and sometimes I would physically attack her. Um, I had problems with my siblings. I had problems with my school. Because of my addictions, I was a very, very aggressive person. We had a lot of curses in our family. I had problems sleeping. I couldn't sleep. Underneath my bed was like a bar. I had so much alcohol under my bed because I was trying to hide it from my mum. I would probably say the worst thing that I faced before coming to church, I'd say two things. I'd say the family problems, but also I'd say the financial problems. Because as a child, my mum couldn't afford to give us the best so she would have to buy our clothes from the second hand shop when we lived in Uganda before coming to England sometimes we ate only one meal a day so you grow up as a child wanting just the normal things so when my mum started to attend the church what I noticed was her calmness I can't say to you that straight away I saw a change in our financial life but there was a change in our home it was just so calm of course, until I would come home and create lots of problems because I was still having my own problems. But my mum herself changed. And that's the reason I went to the Universal Church because I wanted to see what this place was doing to my mum. When I first understood the meaning of the first fruits is when I came to the church and I started to attend a bit more regularly. And in the beginning, to be sincere, I found it very, very hard. Like I explained, I didn't grow up with anything. So in a way, money was a God for me. So to hear that every time I would receive something, I would need to honor God with my first fruits. I thought, oh no, I will come to the church. I'll make my chains of prayer. I'll do all these other things, but this part of my life, is a no and I used to say God will understand and there was a bit of a struggle inside of me because I remember the pastor explaining it's like a marriage it's like you're trying to give God a gift through the campaign but actually you're unfaithful like a husband and wife and I thought oh and that was hard it was difficult but eventually I remember as my relationship with God was developing, I started to understand that it's important for me to use my faith. So I was going through a serious problem at university. Um, I'd been kicked out. And I remember one of the youths in the youth group saying, look, let's test God, you know, use your faith. I decided to return my first fruits the first time as an exchange, to be honest. I wanted to go back to university and finish my career. And to be sincere with you, it worked. And I think for a while as I was developing in my faith, that's how it was. I would want God to answer me as soon as I returned my first fruits on the altar like that same day or that week. But as I developed with God, I understood it was much more than this. And for me, the real understanding happened when I received the Holy Spirit. Over the years, I've seen many things change since I started honoring God. I think I'd start with the biggest change for me because it was the change inside. Um, and I think even if I had acquired all the things I've acquired now physically without the change inside, it wouldn't have tasted as sweet and I don't know if I would have sustained it. And because of that, I've been able to establish a happy family. I've been able to establish a career. I've been able to bring my family members, my relatives through my testimony to God. I'm not addicted, I have peace and my financial life is totally, totally different. It wasn't overnight. You know, I remember a purpose I did in 2017 and I just got the answer in 2023. But through that whole time, I was still faithful. I was still honoring my God. Today, I'm a head teacher. I have a very, very good salary. You know, my family and I, we holiday. We buy what we want to buy. We live in a house where we want to live. We have this fulfilled life. But for me, the most important is the fact that I belong to him and I can honor him in that way. you labored by physical pain or disease? Have you been fighting what seems to be a losing battle? Do you find yourself in an endless cycle of one illness after another? It's time to fight back against every sickness, whatever it may be. On Tuesdays, we shall have the Mantle of Miracles services featuring the Corridor of Miracles with 12 disciples. These 12 servants of God will form a corridor and proclaim your healing by faith as you walk through. 
Join us in the Cathedral of Miracles every Tuesday, only at 7.30 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4 3NX. Invite all those who need healing, including yourself, and determine your healing and restoration by faith in God's Word. Welcome back. Um, I'm going to read for you tonight two verses. And these two verses come from the moment that Solomon inaugurated the temple of Solomon. You know that when Solomon asked for wisdom to guide the people that he inherited from his father, the people of Israel, he presented sacrifices to God and he drew God's attention. What many people don't know is that later, when Solomon inaugurated the temple, and you have to bear in mind, in order for you to see how great it is, what we're going to read in a moment, you have to bear in mind that everything in the temple of Solomon was designed by God. The dimensions of the temple, uh, the space outside the temple, what was inside the temple, everything to the finest, smallest details was designed by God. And one of those things was the altar of sacrifice. So bear in mind that when Solomon, not himself, but he instructed people to build the altar of sacrifice, they did that with the dimensions that God gave them. It's like God was the architect for this. But on the day of the inauguration of the temple, the altar of sacrifice was not big enough to contain the offerings that were presented on the altar. And so the following happened. Look what the Bible says, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 7, Furthermore, Solomon consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat. Do you understand how great this is? That the altar that God gave the dimensions to Solomon was not great enough to contain the sacrifices that Solomon presented. It's like Solomon caught God off guard. It's like Solomon surprised God, going beyond the space that was designated for the offerings. So there was so much to offer to God that they had to consecrate a separate area where they would present the overflow of offerings. What we can see here is the intention of Solomon to honor God in his house. And the exact consequence of Solomon honoring God was the next verse we are going to read. Let's read uh, chapter, same chapter, but now verse 14. Then God said the following, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. As a direct result of Solomon honoring God, if you read the whole chapter, you will see that God said, if my people wander off and sin against me and do this and do that, but if they humble themselves and turn to me in this location, where you honored me, then I will hear their prayer. Today, the first honor we are going to speak about in practice is the honor of the house of God. Now, we cannot answer or speak for other churches, but the universal church has a special care and understanding for the house of God. The house of God is the first place that we have to honor Him. And that is why the altar is not called a stage. That is why 
not everybody can go on the altar. Granted, people can come up to the altar and pray by the altar, but we don't let just anybody to come to the altar and preach on the altar, sing on the altar. Not that we don't get uh, invitations. I wouldn't say invitations, but people offering themselves to come and preach in our church. That happens all the time. And yet, we say no because we understand that those who stand on the altar have to honor God. And I don't know the lives of the people who are not pastors of our church. How can I vouch for them as people who honor our God? So the house of our God has to honor Him with the cleanliness, with the reverence. This is why we make such a, a, a point of people when they enter the church not having mobile phones, not using mobile phones during the service. Because after all, the moment of the prayer, of listening to the Word of God, is a moment of holiness, sanctification, a moment of honor to our God. If we, in a moment of prayer, do you know what it says? If you, during a prayer, it can even be in your house. If you are praying in your house and your phone rings and you stop praying to answer your phone, do you know what you are saying? You are honoring more the person that called you than the one you were talking to. That's all it means. And this is in your house. Imagine in the house of God. If I am there saying, Lord, I worship you, I glorify you, and I feel my phone ringing in my pocket or vibrating in my pocket and I pick it up to see who it is, to check a message. What I am saying is that the person who's calling me is more important than the one I'm talking to. You see how the honor of God permeates everything. That is why in the house of God, we, there are rules. Sometimes people get angry and they say, I, I sometimes see videos of people on social media saying, oh, I went into a church. Not necessarily the universal church, but that happens in the universal church. Oh, I went to, to a church and, you know, I, I wanted my child to stay with me in the service. And my child was crying, but it's the house of God that they wanted to force me to put my child in CBC. But that's the rule. Why? Because we honor God. And in that moment, if you, you have to understand that it's not just about you. It's about the other hundreds of people who are in the service who want to listen to the Word of God. It's not fair that because you decided that you don't want to put your phone on silent or switched off, that you don't want to leave your child in the CBC, it's not fair that the other hundred people, because of one who does not want to honor God, they get to suffer, not to listen, not to, to be able to pay attention to the Word of God. Is that fair? No. So there are rules in the house of God. The moment you enter through the house of God, there are rules. I remember uh, in Taiwan, <laughs> When uh, one of the first few times that I was using the underground, the underground in Taiwan, you cannot find a speck of dust. It's one of the cleanest places I've ever seen. And I remember the f one of the first few times I was using the, the underground, I was entering through the gates. I paid and I was chewing gum. And a security guard stopped me. He said, you cannot use the underground chewing gum. The only thing you are able to carry with you into the underground is a bottle of water. <laughs> if there are rules in the underground, imagine in the house of God. When the Temple of Solomon was built, there were rules how people were supposed to come to the house of God. Today is the same. So tonight we learn in this program, when you go to the house of God, honor God with the way that you dress. You know, you can come to the house of God however you want, as long as you apply that one word called modesty. We're not talking about wearing expensive clothes, no, nothing to do with the value of your clothes, but modesty. Your modesty has to rule not only how you honor God in, at work, how you dress, but especially in the church. How we talk to others, how we deal with others. If we honor God, that starts in His house. I would like right now to pray for you that maybe, or not to pray for you, but with you, that maybe you see 
that when you started attending the church and the things of God were new for you, you put a lot of emphasis and care in how you looked after, you know, presenting yourself before God in His house, the reverence. You know, maybe when you started in the church, you saw the house of God as so holy that you wouldn't even dream of drinking coffee in a service. Sometimes we see that happen. We are in the presence of God. You know, renew your vows of honor with Him from now on. Let's talk to God and you can start to say, Lord, if I had, instead of honor, honoring you in your house, if I had been dishonoring you, forgive me. Let me honor you with the best that I present to you. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. Lord, Solomon honored you and I'm sure that you know, you knew everything. You knew he was going to do this. You knew that the altar that you gave the dimensions for were not enough to hold the offerings that will be presented that day. But you, Lord, you allowed, you allowed that to happen so that it would jump at us as an example when we read your word. A man who wanted to honor God so much that he went beyond what people expected him to offer that day. And because he honored you, my Lord, you honored him. And not only him, but you honored all of us because you said, if my people, when they go astray, they turn their back on me, they, they, they go into the other gods of this world, if they humbly seek my face, I will answer them. You said, Lord, in that same chapter, whatever prayers are said in that temple will be heard. My ears will be inclined to hear every prayer that is said in that place. And today is no different. We may not be standing at the temple of Solomon. We may be standing in the temple in the Cathedral of Miracles in Finsbury Park. Croydon, Brixton, Lozells, Manchester, Scotland, wherever we are, but that place is your house. And if it is your house, from the moment we enter your house, we honor your name by honoring you there in that location. My father, if over the years this person had perhaps lost the understanding of holiness that is necessary in the sanctuary. My God, let this person start to, to place this value that is needed in honoring you inside of your house. And consequently, I have no doubt that you will answer, honor and answer those who call upon you. Father, I bless your people right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. If you read that same chapter, I believe that chapter, the chapter afterwards, you know, God says that every prayer that will be said in that location, in that building, the house of God, that His ears would be inclined to hear the words that would be said there when people would pray to God. And today I believe that happens in every house of God. Tomorrow we'll be back to continue speaking about honor. How to honor God in practice. Today we learned how to honor God in His house. Tomorrow we'll continue to learn how to honor Him. This Sunday, remember, we are going to have the blessing of Melchizedek on the Sunday of honor when we anoint those who will bring their first fruits or those who have brought their first fruits already and we are going to take part of the Lord's Supper together. Now I'm going to leave you with a video that shows the, the last 10 years, a little glimpse of the last 10 years of the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. 
In a couple of weeks, we are going to celebrate the 10th year anniversary. And this will get to show you, to open your understanding to what will happen in the Temple of Solomon and what God has done there in the past 10 years. As we honor God in the Temple of Solomon, let's honor Him in whatever UCKG we attend, no matter how small it is. God bless you. Bye-bye. An audacious structure that attracts thousands of people from Brazil and around the world. However, to understand the grandeur of this place, it is necessary to go back in time. In 2009, in the city of Jerusalem, in Israel, a dream was born in the heart of Bishop Macedo for everyone to be able to see the Holy Land. Moved by faith, the construction of the Temple of Solomon began in 2010 on a plot chosen in Sao Paulo in Braz, at the heart of Brazil's main city. With a construction area of 100,000 square meters, the Temple of Solomon was erected in four years. Stone cladding surrounds the entire temple. These stones came from Israel, from the city of Hebron. The structure is a replica of the Temple of Solomon mentioned in the Bible, with the main objective of gathering the people to God. This is a place of rescue to seek holiness to the Lord, the unshakable faith mentioned in the Bible and a genuine encounter with our Creator. It is as though it could serve as proof that the God described in the Holy Bible is the same yesterday and today. With the capacity to hold 10,000 people, all lives are touched. The temple is a place that embraces anyone, without judgment, regardless of religion. The objective here is for everyone to have a spiritual experience like never before. And there are thousands of accounts from people whose lives have changed after visiting the Temple of Solomon. Anyone who comes here does not forget what they feel. Since the world was created, God's desire is for us to have a close relationship with Him, to have intimacy with His presence. Going into the Temple of Solomon is also a spiritual journey, where it is possible to connect with God to access the faith that brings true changes to our lives. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. If you'd like to donate in support of this work, please do so by any of the following ways. Via online banking using our details on screen. Through the QR code which will take you to the payment page on our website. Or you can gift aid your donation writing through the email address on screen. Thank you for your help.